Class 2, The Breastfeeding Lifestyle. Can breastfeeding fit into your lifestyle? You're a busy woman and have a lot going on, especially now. You may be wondering how breastfeeding will fit into your new life. Breastfeeding takes commitment, although you may find breastfeeding is the most convenient way to feed your baby. Deciding how to feed your baby is an important health issue that affects you and your baby in the short and long term. The evidence is clear that breast milk is the optimal food for baby's development. The more breast milk a baby receives, and the longer a child is breastfed, the more protection from disease he receives. It's also true that breast milk is so robust, even a little breast milk provides a lot of important benefits for babies. It's important to learn all you can about breastfeeding. Only you know your family's situation, and only you can make the decision that is best in your unique circumstances. Consider the information and options before your baby is born. You may have some questions and concerns about breastfeeding and how it will fit into your life. For example, will I have enough milk? What if I have a cesarean birth? What if it hurts? I have to go back to work or school. Can breastfeeding work in my busy lifestyle? We'll discuss these issues and more in the coming classes and help you make an informed choice on how to feed your baby. And hopefully, you'll have a working plan in plenty of time for your baby's arrival. You may have heard that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, the same is true when it comes to breastfeeding. While breastfeeding is the natural way for babies to feed, and mothers come perfectly equipped to do the job, every family member has an important role in helping breastfeeding succeed. Some dads are concerned that they'll feel left out if the mother chooses to breastfeed. Talk to your partner throughout your pregnancy. Share the information you've learned and discuss the important and lasting health benefits of breastfeeding. Explain that you're going to need support and special care, especially in the first few weeks. Your partner can provide a cocoon of sorts in your home environment, a comfortable, quiet place where you and your baby can practice nursing without interruption from excess noise and activity, visitors and phone calls. He may need to run interference when the doorbell or phone rings so that you can focus on getting to know your new baby. As far as baby care goes, your partner has a very unique and special role. Daddy bonding time can involve calming the baby by holding him skin to skin against his bare chest, bathing the baby, and spending time sitting with you and the baby to enjoy those special moments that breastfeeding creates. He can help by changing diapers, caring for the other children, and helping with chores. If feeding the baby is important to your partner, once breastfeeding is well established, your partner can feed the baby expressed breast milk, breast milk that you pump. You need lots of loving support during this time. It builds a foundation for breastfeeding success and a healthy start for your family. Grandparents are an important part of your family, and they too have essential roles in successful breastfeeding. Years ago, though, many mothers were told by their health care providers in the media that feeding infant formula or breastfeeding was just a matter of choice, that one was no better than another. Often, they were given incorrect advice and were told that they didn't have enough milk or that something was wrong with their milk. Unfortunately, some had negative experiences with breastfeeding, which influenced their opinions accordingly. Family members need to know that current research discovered incredible health advantages of breastfeeding for mothers and babies. The support of your family members is crucial. Share the information you've received with them. There's a fact sheet just for grandparents. They can even take this class. When you're supported by your family and friends, your confidence is boosted, and you may be more successful in achieving your breastfeeding goals. Mothers today are often very busy with places to go and things to do. Some mothers have heard that breastfeeding ties you down. Not so. Breastfeeding babies are quite portable. When you're with your baby, all his needs are met. You always have milk available. It's clean, it's warm, and it's ready to go whenever baby needs to be fed. You can breastfeed your baby anytime, any place. Breastfeeding on the go is easier than you might imagine. When you think about breastfeeding in public, you may feel uncomfortable or embarrassed, but there are many ways to nurse your baby discreetly. If you're shopping, you can slip into a woman's lounge, dressing room, or a safe and private place to feed. Medela has an app, I Breastfeed, that lists breastfeeding-friendly places in the U.S. You and your baby get to know each other very well through breastfeeding. You'll build an optimal milk supply by nursing the baby whenever he seems hungry. Try not to watch the clock. Just tune in to your baby. 
Baby slings and infant carriers that hold baby close to a mother's body have helped to make babies comfortable and extremely portable. Wherever a mother goes, she can conveniently take her baby. There are many of these slings and carriers on the market. You may need to try a couple of different styles before you find one that you prefer. Mothers have discovered some remarkable tricks to help with discreet nursing. A mother can wear a loose-fitting top lifted from the waist or on buttons from the bottom to feed her baby without exposing the breast. Different styles of nursing bras and belly bands provide extra coverage. Using a shawl or blanket over your shoulder and sitting near a wall or the back of the room is an option. If you're worried about being too revealing in public, practice in front of a mirror until you're comfortable. Most women get very good at nursing discreetly, so that most people have no idea that a baby is actually feeding. There's an old saying, a mother's work is never done, and it's never truer than right after you become a mother. This is a time when you need extra TLC. If possible, decrease any additional stressors in your life before your baby is born. It's amazing how much time it can take to care for such a tiny new being. After being up with the baby all day, feeding him and changing his diapers, you may realize you didn't get a chance to brush your teeth or even put on deodorant, much less take a shower. Motherhood can be overwhelming. You'll be tired after your baby is born, so be sure to catch up on your sleep when he sleeps. Don't try to rush around cleaning the house, cooking dinner, and doing laundry while he naps. Put your feet up and relax a bit during nap time. You'll need it to recharge your energy. Having the baby blues, feeling sad, overwhelmed, or even breaking into tears is a normal part of hormonal changes associated with recovering from childbirth. This is temporary, and most mothers feel better after two or three weeks. If you find that these feelings do not go away, if you're extremely sad, having trouble sleeping or eating, or find yourself unable to care for yourself or your baby, call your doctor or midwife immediately. You may have postpartum depression a serious condition which can be treated. There's no need to suffer in silence. Breastfeeding usually delays the return of your menstrual periods. The risk of pregnancy is less while you're exclusively breastfeeding, but you can still get pregnant. You're less likely to get pregnant while breastfeeding if it's been no more than six months since your baby was born. You're breastfeeding only, meaning your baby isn't receiving any formula, or you haven't yet had a menstrual period. Discuss birth control choices with your doctor or midwife. Breastfeeding mothers don't have to be on any special diet. Healthcare experts recommend mothers eat a variety of fresh and healthy foods from all the food groups. There's no need to avoid any particular foods. Mothers from all around the world include spicy foods in their diets, and babies in India and Mexico are no fussier than babies in the United States. Generally, anything you eat is okay. Balance and moderation are key. Begin exercising slowly after your baby's birth. Many healthcare providers recommend light exercise, such as walking, until your baby is six weeks old. Walking outside with the baby in good weather is a great way for both of you to get some fresh air and light exercise. Regular exercise, such as walking, will also increase the levels of serotonin, which promotes positive feelings and mood. Your baby will also benefit from getting outside. Exercise five or six times a week can increase lean muscle mass and improve cardiovascular fitness of mothers. Some studies have shown an increase in prolactin, the milk production hormone, with exercise. Many mothers plan to return to work after their baby is born. For those mothers who plan to continue breastfeeding after returning to work, they express their milk with a breast pump while at work. Other mothers plan to switch to infant formula at that time. It's wise to explore the options before your baby is born, but the final decision doesn't need to be made right away. There are federal and state laws which protect a baby's right to receive his mother's milk for the first year of life. Federal law states a woman can breastfeed her child in any federal building or property. Section 7 of the Fair Labor Standards Act states that an employer shall provide a reasonable unpaid break time for an employee to express breast milk for her nursing child for one year after the child's birth and must provide a private place other than a bathroom. We'll go into more detail on how to combine working and breastfeeding in class nine. We've talked a bit about how a breastfed baby can easily fit into a busy mother's lifestyle. Next, we'll discuss how to prepare for breastfeeding.